Europa Park is one of the world's best theme parks. If you've never been there, imagine Epcot's World Showcase fleshed out as a full amusement park. You have the coasters of Busch Gardens combined with the dark rides and theming of a Disney park. Does that sound amazing? It should. I love Europa Park, and in this video I'll explain why this truly is a bucket list destination. Europa Park opened in 1975, and it's owned by the Mach family. Mach Rides wanted a theme park to serve as an exhibition site for their attractions. Not only does Europa Park positively showcase this German company's products, but it's also one of the best and most well-themed amusement parks in the entire world. The park is a series of themed lands, mostly themed to different European nations. There are 15 different countries, each with its own distinct architecture and feel. The transitions between lands are seamless, and you really feel teleported to a different country as you walk through the park. This park has some amazing attractions, but you could honestly have a blast just moving country to country soaking up all the sights, sounds, and smells. All these areas look amazing, but there are a few I want to highlight in particular. Switzerland is really cool with the alleyways between the Swiss chalets. There are some animatronic displays in the buildings, and you also have a lot of kinetic energy with Schweizerbobbin running overhead. Italy is a quaint feel. I love how the buildings and attractions are set around a beautiful fountain. Scandinavia was rebuilt after a devastating fire. The narrow midway feels like a European village with all the shops and storefronts. Then the area opens up with the Vinjammer swinging ship on the water and the fjord rafting attraction running around the land. Then there are three additional areas not themed to countries. They have a different aesthetic, but they're equally as detailed. Adventureland feels similar to the popular lands of the Disney parks with the wooden architecture and landscaping. Grimm's Enchanted Forest features charming walkthroughs and displays of popular children's fairy tales. If you're familiar with Efteling's famous fairy tale forest, this area feels like the attraction on a much smaller scale. Then you have Minimoy's Kingdom, which is a unique indoor area themed to Arthur and the Invisibles. The area has a whimsical feel with the oversized and colorful theming, plus the powered coaster running overhead. Moving on to the ride lineup, Europa Park is absolutely stacked in this department. The park currently has 13 different roller coasters, and number 14 is on its way in 2023, and it will be a mock Big Dipper in an entirely new themed section of the park. The coaster lineup is unique, deep, and well-rounded. There's a good mix of thrill coasters and family coasters, and many of them are well-themed too. They have detailed queue lines, some visuals along the route, plus custom soundtracks. Every coaster here is a full package. The best two coasters at this park are oddly not from Mach. Silver Star is one of the best Balljar and Mabillard hyper coasters. It opened in 2002 as Europe's tallest and fastest roller coaster. I had always heard this coaster was over trimmed, but they have barely been in use in my visits. And my latest visits were on hot summer days, so if you think the trims are going to be used, they would have been used then when the ride was running fast. The first half has tons of sustained floater airtime on the massive first drop in those parabolic camelbacks. Then the return run is one of the best of any BM. You have two drops with rare ejector airtime for a BM hyper, a solid helix, another great camelback, and a snappy S bend into the brakes. Add in a smooth and super comfortable ride experience and you truly have a winner. I have a separate review going into more detail, but this is the park's best ride in my opinion. Wodan Timber Coaster is one of the largest coasters from Great Coasters International, and it features a frenetically paced layout. You have one of the best drops on a GCI. The first drop is tall, and it offers great sustained floater airtime. The rest of the layout is a delightful mix of airtime. You get sustained floater airtime on the straighter hills, and quicker pops into the turns. The ride was running rough in 2017, but it ran like a dream in 2021. And even if you have to wait a while for this ride, the queue line is neat with all the theming in the tunnels, plus the statues, and I talk about that more in its own review. Blue Fire is the best mock coaster here. This launch coaster is one of the company's most important attractions ever, as it signaled their willingness and ability to build a major thrill coaster. This ride is a solid launch, followed by four fun inversions. The first three gracefully levitate you out of your seat, and then the final inline twist feels very similar to the Mosasaurus roll with its violent laterals and airtime. Then the ride also adds in some airtime pops, nice visuals along the layout, and a very smooth ride. Check out my review if you want to hear more. 
Euromir is a weird prototype spinning coaster from Mach that I just reviewed yesterday. Unlike their later spinners that had free spinning vehicles, the cars on Euromir could only spin at preset points. The main layout has the vehicles locked in place, but you do have some very strong positive Gs. You just have to watch out for the shaky transitions though. Then this coaster is a catchy soundtrack and one of the weirdest starts ever with that 3 minute spiral lift hill that feels like a dance party and then you have a slow extended elevated section around the towers. Eurosat is an indoor coaster in a geodesic dome similar to Spaceship Earth. The ride was recently retracted and rethemed and now it's better than ever. The ride has a similarly weird spiral lift hill like Euromir plus a great soundtrack but the rest of the ride is far different. It's basically a long downhill course with some sudden and decent turns. Then you have an interesting finale going underneath the legs of women performing the can-can. Schweizer Bobbin was the prototype mock bobsled. The layout isn't as strong as the other bobsleds out there, but the final helixes are decently fun. Just make sure to lean forwards because the cars really vibrate down the slatted trough. Matterhorn Blitz is your mostly standard mock wild mouse. The key difference here is that this one has a bizarre elevator lift at the start and a large drop afterwards. The park also has two water coasters. Poseidon is the better and longer of the two. The slow sections have some light theming and then the coaster section is a large helix. But the highlight is the funkily profiled final plunge into a subterranean tunnel. Atlantica Super Splash is a simpler water coaster. It's basically a glorified shoot the shoot. It features a similarly great final plunge, but there's this gimmicky backwards dip leading up to it. Both these water coasters get riders comfortably wet without soaking them to the bone. Fjord rafting can get you wetter. This well landscaped river rapids ride features a soaking wave at the start, followed by some milder ones plus waterfalls that will mist you. This is a long ride and there's even a little bit of theming along the course. If you want to get drenched, your best bet is oddly the Tiroler Vild Wasserbahn log flume. Since the park loads each log completely, you have a lot of weight into each splash. And the first one will soak you. The drops in this one are okay. The highlight is this themed indoor section through a multicolored cave. Alpen Express Enzian is a mock powered coaster that shares the same cave. This is one of the better options for younger guests because it features a tame layout that's more about the visuals. Pegasus is another solid junior or family coaster. It's super smooth, and if you're in the back, there are two drops that come close to giving airtime. The true kitty coaster here is Baja Express, and it's one of the most over-engineered kitty coasters ever, with the beefier trains, retracting load platform, and the timed animatronics. This rides the best attraction in Ireland, which serves as the park's children's area. I like how many of the rides in this area can comfortably accommodate kids and adults. It's really nice when young kids can share the ride to their parents. Then you also have this giant playground with these massive slides. I would have loved this area when I was younger. But this isn't the only place you'll find attractions suitable for kids. Most areas have a dark rider track guide ride that can comfortably accommodate riders of any age. Then you'll also find a few other kiddie rides and playgrounds peppered throughout the park. One of the best other areas for young kids is the Minimoys Kingdom, especially because the Arthur IP is targeted more towards kids. That area also is one of the park's most technologically advanced coasters in Arthur. This powered suspended dark ride coaster features a nice mix of screens and physical sets, with the highlight being the vibrant scene through the ripoff of Las Vegas' strip. As a pure coaster, this ride isn't too thrilling outside of a few mildly forceful turns on the outdoor bit. This ride really is about the theming and the coaster excels in that department. This park has almost a dozen different dark rides. Quite a few could be called Disney knockoffs based off their names and theming, but they're so well done that they may even be better than their Disney counterparts. The star dark ride is Puritan and Batavia. Rebuilt after a fire, this ride features stunning visuals. The large sets are busy and load with detailed animatronics. And then the ride also has clever use of projection mapping to spice up a few select scenes. Geisterschloss starts off like the Haunted Mansion with some familiar scenes, but the ride also incorporates more jump scares, making it a great all-around dark ride between the production quality and the thrills. Piccolo Mundo literally translates to Small World, but it rides nothing like the one at Disney. This one showcases Italy's passion for love, architecture, and food. It's a weird mix, but it works. 
The ride is short, but the visuals are fun and cartoony. Snorri Torn is one of the newest dark rides here. I love how it's tied into Rulantica, the nearby indoor water park also owned by Europa Park. The music and screen-based visuals create a pleasant atmosphere, and the ride also features a unique simulator bit at the end for variety. Madame Frudenreich Curiosities was refurbished recently. The old version was a slow-paced, dated tour past dinosaur animatronics. Now it features the dinos performing cartoony tasks along the way. It's a lot more fun. Schlittenfart Schlieflockchen is a short and dated dark ride. It's another one with an infectious soundtrack, but the visuals in this one are a lot more simplistic as the characters are dolls. But the consistent style works as a contrast to the other rides in the park. Aventure Atlantis is an interactive shooting dark ride with a ton of targets to take aim at. Make sure to aim for the red targets that are worth way more than any other target. The figures range from 2D cutouts to smaller characters, all the way up to giant dragons, so it's a long but pretty average dark ride. Fluke der Cassandra is a rare mock madhouse. The ride has a convincing inverting effect, and there's a chilling surprise at the end that'll make most people jump. Volatarium is one of the better flying theaters out there. I love the theming in the queue line, and the visuals during the ride section are about as stunning as you can get for this type of ride. Along with these dark rides, you can also find some walkthroughs. Moving on to the flat rides, this isn't Europa Park's strong suit, but that's fine. Their depth in the coaster, water, and dark ride department more than compensates. You have a variety of family-friendly spinning rides, plus three flat rides I recommend checking out. First is Football Scooter. This is a very weird bumper cars ride, where you have two teams trying to bump an exercise ball into a goal. It is pure chaos, but it's addictively fun and challenging. You can either try to score, or you can clobber others who are hell-bent on scoring and not paying attention to you. Second is Columbus Jolly. This is an indoor Himalaya with some screen and lighting effects. The laterals are decent, and riders are given a wheel to steer whether you're traveling forwards or backwards during the ride, which is quite unique. Third is Euro Tower, which is a giant observation tower offering great aerial views of this beautiful park. Rounding out the ride lineup are a series of track guide attractions, some like the EP Express transport you across the park. Others just take riders on scenic loops, sometimes in cars and sometimes in boats. These rides aren't my forte, but they're a big hit with kids and families. I'm also not the biggest show person, but I have heard that Europa Park does quite well in this area. The only ones I've seen is Historama, which provide a history of the park. Unfortunately, it's entirely in German, so it's a bit difficult for me to understand. On that note, the park is very accommodating for English speakers as a whole. While the rides are almost entirely in German, the signage is in multiple languages and many employees were bilingual. I particularly love how the employee name tags show which languages each one is fluent in, which is super helpful. Europa Park is the second highest attendance of any theme park in Europe, so expect to see a lot of people there. However, this park handles crowds about as well as any park. Even on the busiest of days, the worst wait you'll find for their signature coasters is about 40 to 60 minutes and I find the wait times are usually overestimated. Most rides are capacity machines, and you rarely stop moving through the queue line. Dispatches are lightning fast, and every attraction runs a comically high amount of vehicles. The worst waits in the park are typically for Eurosat, Vote on Timber Coaster, Blue Fire Mega Coaster, and Arthur. Prior to the pandemic, these four rides all had single rider lines. Post-COVID, these lines were converted into virtual queue lines for the park's free Skip the Line Pass system. There is no paid option to skip the lines here, and I love the free system. It reminded me more of Disneyland's Max Pass. You could book a 10-minute return window for the prior four coasters, plus Euromir and the Piratin and Batavia Dark Ride. Return times are released up to three hours out. Times were plentiful for Euromir and Piratin and Batavia, I could almost always find a return time for those attractions no more than 30 minutes out. However, those two rides tended to have a shorter standby wait than the other four coasters. You can only book one ride at a time, and after you use the reservation, you can either rebook the same ride or an entirely new one. As with Max Pass, keep refreshing and the times will change. I would keep cycling until I saw times for the four coasters. 
Bluefire and Wodon are the two I most recommend. Not only are they two of the park's best rides, but skipping those lines will save you a ton of time. It is worth noting that you cannot get the front row if you use the virtual queue, because those two rides have a dedicated front row queue only accessible from the standby line, but the operators will typically honor row requests for any other seat. My recommended touring plan depends if you're a resort guest or not. Hotel guests enter in the back of the park and get 30 minutes of ERT on a handful of rides, most notably Blue Fire. Once the park officially opens, you're able to get a few laps in Wodon before the crowds arrive. You should then utilize the virtual queue line on the other three included coasters. And I would recommend staying on site. The hotels do fill up in the summer seasons pretty early, but the hotels are super nice, convenient, and fairly priced given their amenities. If you're not a hotel guest, know that the main entrance seems to open a half hour early, and a few dark rides in the Germany and Italy section will already be running. I strongly recommend riding Volatarium right away if you're one of the first ones in the park. Otherwise, come back in the mid-afternoon when the line for that ride dies down. When the official park opening time hits, I recommend pulling virtual queues for the major coasters and making your way towards the back of the park, hitting any coaster along the way with a short wait. How much time you need depends on what your interests are. If you only care about coasters, Europa Park can be done in a day, but you're doing yourself a disservice ignoring all the other aspects of this park. I think you want at least two or three days so you can appreciate all the dark rides and theming as well. This is not a park you want to rush through, and there's plenty you'll want to re-ride anyway. The park hours are a bit weird. In peak summer season, Europa is open daily from 9am until at least 6pm. Midway through the day, the park will announce if they're extending their closing time depending how crowded the park is. From my experience, the closing time has typically been extended an hour if you're there in the summer. Speaking of hours, I really like how the Rulantica Water Park tends to be open later than the amusement park, and it also features a twilight ticket so you can easily do both parks in one day if you so choose. I have a separate video on Rulantica, but it's one of the prettiest water parks I've ever seen, and the slide lineup is pretty solid too. One of the most lauded aspects about Europa Park is their food. I love the quantity of food options available in the park, and the variety. Most of the items I've had here are decent but few have wowed me. I know that's a bit of a hot take compared to most people though, others seem to love the food way more. The standout item for me are the poffertjes in the Netherlands section, which are delicious mini pancakes. I think it goes without saying I strongly recommend Europa Park. This park excels in so many areas. From the roller coasters, to the dark rides, to the theming, to the customer service. I always leave this park with a big smile on my face, and anxiously await my next visit. This truly is one of the five best theme parks in the world, and it's right up there at Fantasia Land for the best park in Europe. This park is something for everyone, and it's a magical place. So those are my thoughts on Europa Park, the incredible theme park in Germany. What are your thoughts on this highly themed mock show floor? Do you agree it's one of the best parks in the world? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.